Everybody, uh, welcome to the Plugin Boutique channel. You're with David Carboni. I'm the creative director of Scalar, and today on this live stream, I'm going to be taking you through some advanced features and modulation in uh, Scalar 2. Um, I hope everyone had a nice Easter weekend. Um, you were just listening to a tune from myself featuring Ungus, Ungus, Ungus holding me now, which is released tomorrow, coincidentally. Hopefully, that wasn't too loud for. All of you over in Europe for your for your lunch there, I think it might be. Um, the uh, the big news is that we've been working very hard on a Scalar 2 course, which has been released and is now available at Plugin Boutique. I think if you go to the Courses tab on uh, your browser there at Plugin Boutique, you'll see it. Um, it's been um, a long time coming, and myself, Tristan Malik, and James Houston go through all the features and functions. Um, and it's uh, it's a great course. Had great feedback so far this weekend since release. So um, check it out. We'll be playing an excerpt from it later on. Um, but today, what I want to do is I want to make a tune from scratch. And what I really want to do is I want to look at some of the more advanced features that probably many of us users don't take um, huge advantage of. The modulation. I know I've done a couple of videos on modulation. I know Joshua Casper has, and quite a few other people do have too. Um, so 
Um, yeah, so we're going to be covering um, making that track and looking at some of the things like patterns and pad mode um, and doing it live. Um, the uh, uh, Joshua Casper, thank you very much, is looking after the chat. So um, be active and polite and nice, and you will um, be in the running to win um, some Scalar courses and the Scalar 2 plugin. Um, um, Joshua will pick some winners and he'll feed them through to me, and I'll let you guys know. And we'll come back and tell you who the winners are and how to collect your prize. The course actually covers um, all the scalar versions right up until 2.7. We do also have a 2.8 inbound, which is really exciting. Loads of new content coming there. Um, probably expecting it early May, so stay tuned on that. Um, and the course is completely um, uh, current, continuously updated. Um, feature subtitles, translation, about 380 minutes of content. Um, so yeah, you can, you can check it out. Um, okay. So let's, um, let's have a look at my session here and let's talk through what we're doing. Now you'll probably see me flicking across menus and menus, just checking the chat and making sure I've got everything covered. But, um, what I've, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, I don't know, alternative poppy rocky track and I'm going to use a couple of contact. We're going to focus on using contact libraries and how Scalar can work um, with third party instruments um, nicely. Now I'm using Logic and I'll be using the MIDI effects but um, as covered in the Scalar course where we show you how to control third party instruments in all the doors including Logic, Ableton, Cubase, Pro Tools, FL Studio, Studio One, uh, and a couple of the others, um, I'm going to be using Logic today, but everything I do really is about the features in Scalar. Um, so you can see that I've got my track set at 100 beats per minute. It's pretty straightforward. And you can see that I've preloaded some drums there. Um, nothing spectacular, but just to have the skeleton there. Um, can be any drums. Not even sure where I got those drums from. A Loop Masters pack, no doubt. But you can see, uh, more importantly, I'm kind of laying out a verse, bridge, chorus, a middle eight, and, and we're going to complete an outro. Um, the purpose of this is to really show how Scalar can not only help you come up with chord progressions, and there's many ways to create chord progressions, as many of our users know. You can go straight to any of the presets. Um, you can go to the chord uh, page, and you can click around in the circle of fifths, and you can start populating your own chords. You can go to suggest mode. Um, you can do many things, but what I want to demonstrate is how I can find a few chords that I like within Scalar. And rather than just repeat that, let's say we're going to go for a four um, bar chord progression, um, a four part chord progression, I should say. We're going to show how we can use modulation to vary that chord progression, change key, find a middle eight, and help get Scalar to help us work out how to make it all nice and smooth. Um, so, uh, mic up a little bit says Joshua. Okay. I'll give you a little bit more there, Joshua. Um, so, okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a scaler and I'm going to call it up as a MIDI effect. Um, so here it is, um, in logic, obviously we can call up scaler as a MIDI effect, which basically just says, I'm going to pass through all the information into the next instrument that you load. You can see that I've already got some effects preloaded, nothing spectacular, um, some SSL, actually, I th this is a nice plugin on um, that I got from Plugin Boutique, and I'm going to use this through the track. It's the SSL Native Saturator, really nice plugin, and it's just going to be just giving us a little bit of color. Um, but other than that, pretty much as you see, um, an empty session. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do straight away is I'm going to pull up an instrument, and I'm going to grab Contact Seven. Um, and whilst that's loading, uh, you can see it's um, popped up here. I'm going to just pull up the side pane and we're going to load an instrument. And given it's going to be an acoustic -y, rocky alternative track, um, not that that would be the typical type of genre I write, but I just want to show how Scalar can be flexible there. Um, I'm going to pull up a, the electric. I'm going to use all the electric deluxe patches and I'm going to pull up electric sunburst deluxe. Okay, um, now these are really nice phrases that um, uh, kind of you can switch in between. I'm just going to pull up the standard patch, which is Ibiza, um, and I'm going to um, tell it to play the fourth 
part of this. Now, the first thing to know is that many instruments like to sit within a key range. So you can see down the bottom here, C2 to, um, to A5 is where this patch likes to be played. Now, at the moment, Scalar's going to just play whatever chords within whatever range. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll pop this across so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'll just hide that side pane um, and I will pull up. Sorry, I'll re-pull up that contact there. I'll pop it to the side of the screen so we can see both Scalar and the contact. Um, and what I'm going to do, as I said, I'm going to write a, a rocky-ish track. I'm going to go to rock. Um, the uh, song chord sets here and I'm going to pull up rock four. Now straight away, as soon as I start playing, you'll notice that um, these chords are triggering as per the chord progression that was written by the artists here at Samplify. And they're not really taking into consideration the key range of Contacts Electric Sunburst Deluxe. So it'll start doing funny things like you can see there it's actually triggering a key switch and playing a kind of a, a, um, a strut if you like or a muted part of the guitar. So I don't want it to do that. I don't want it to play around this key switch area. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to voice grouping. Now many of you know voice grouping as being something that can put all the notes together across a chord progression to make for really smooth voice leading. Um, and it's very popular and it's a really great way to just suddenly be making thick chords and make everything sound smooth together so we get really nice voice leading. Um, but what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to focus on, obviously I could go the guitar voicings here, they'll work too, but I want to be specific and I want to say keep it within, keep all the notes that I'm going to hear outside of scalar within a certain range and the grouping C2 to B3 works there. So when I click on C2 to B3, it's basically going to say, I'm going to play, as you can see my mouse here, I'm going to play everything across this range. So here we go. And what's really nice about that is it's forcing the notes within a certain area. So actually it is doing voice leading. It's keeping everything nice and together and the, the contact instrument. Um, is working really nicely. So, okay, I'm going to I'm going to stick with those first four chords. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab them all, grab all four, and I can right click. Um, the right click menu is really really handy wherever you are, whether you're in section A, section B, and I can add to current pattern, or of course, as many of you know, I can just drag it straight down into my progression builder. I'm, I'm going to bind that. Binding it basically means I can just play it on my keyboard using using one one figure. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to write those trigger notes. So I'm going to write C, D, E and F, which will trigger those chords. Um, okay, so let's, um, I'll cycle around for this first section here. And in Logic, I'm going to pull up the pencil tool and I'm going to write a MIDI region and I'm going to stretch it out for the nine bars and I'm going to open it there, double click and here's my my bounded area. Yeah, you can see that that's just triggering those chords and what I'll do is I'll write those notes um, a bit smaller there so, and I'm going to make the chords, I'm going to make them say two bars, okay? So two bars each or eight beats if you like. And I think I'm going to save as I go just in case something happens and I have to reboot. Um, everything should be fine, famous last words. So now I've got those trigger notes. Um, I'll open up the contact and scatter again and I'm going to just play. And you can see it's triggering those notes. Everything's staying nicely here within contact. Okay, cool. So that gives me my um, that gives me my chord progression. So effectively, I could just say, okay, cool. Keep writing that chord progression, um, and keep playing through those same four chords. But what I want Scalar to do is I want it 
to help me modulate to a different key. So um, there's many ways that I can do that. Um, what I might do maybe to start, and I'm probably getting myself in trouble by doing this, I'm going to add, actually no, I'll do this in a second. I'm going to add a vocal, but let's, let's flush out that chord progression a little bit first. Um, the, the first thing to note is that at the moment I'm playing this patch. I could be playing, say, this patch. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to also swap the patches and I'm going to swap what Scalar's doing. So let's get there first. So let's pull up a Scalar. Um, there's my four chords. As I said, I could keep going there, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the modulation section. So I could, uh, option five is a shortcut, or I could just hit the modulation section. And as we know, or as we may not know for Scalar users, there are plenty of modulation presets here to help us find new chords, but also change key, help us land in a certain chord or find a spice up our chord progression. And I'm going to use all of them today. Um, the very first one is the progression preset. And that basically says, well, cool, um, let's modulate to a different key. Where would you like to modulate? So I can choose whatever key here that I'd like to modulate to. I know, I know using the circle of fifths that if I modulate close by in general music theory, it's the safest and easiest way. Um, now there's a bunch of questions coming through. Are there any plans to integrate a rhythm section for creating drum grooves in Scalar? Um, uh, there are lots and lots of plans for Scalar. There's lots of exciting things in development. There's not much I can say, but I think things will be a lot clearer as we get towards um, the latter part of the year. How integrated is Scalar 2 with Push 2? Um, uh, Scalar works really nicely with um, um, modules such as Machine and Push. Um, that's probably, there is a video I did, I think it's the Scalar 2.5 update video where we show how you can use some of the um, binding modes to work nicely with the pads on Push and Machine. Um, uh, and uh, I'll get to some of the other questions, but keep them coming through. I'll occasionally flip over to the questions and kind of come back to um, to writing a track. Okay, so I said I want to modulate. I know I'm in C major. Um, that was pretty obvious. Sorry if I didn't already make it because make it obvious because when I selected rock four, the chords scalar detected them to be in a C major scale, being happy, light, bright, and positive. Um, and now if I go back into the modulation mode, here's the progression. I, I want to go to to D, um, and it's basically saying, okay, well here's your chords as you had them in C major, and this is what it would sound like in D major. Cool, that sounds good. How do I get from one key to another? So how do I modulate? Um, uh, well, we've had many, many artists, um, well, a couple in particular actually, who helped us write modulation pathways for many um, scales and modes. And, and what they were is, basically handwritten and the development team did a really good job of integrating them and giving us these suggested modulation pathways. So they're not really AI generated, they're, they're based on actual human modulations and how they would work. And that's one of the things that I really personally love about Scalar is whilst it does use obviously the you know fair bit of AI or machine learning to like suggest mode does, it's always first and foremost based on human input. Um, so a suggested modulation pathway is basically saying, how do I get from one scale and mode to another? And to do that, we would need a pivot chord, so a final chord. That's our pivot chord there, the A major. We know that that feels nice. And then this says the suggested modulation pathway. So go from here, integrate that middle lane somehow and come into your final um, uh, new chord progression in D major. So just using my kind of common sense, I'm thinking, okay, here's my chord progression. Okay, now if I start again, but this time swap into the suggested modulation pathway, going to G major, into the E minor, into the A major, that should land me nicely into my new chord progression. Okay, that... That all sounds good. I think it'd be nice to write it in, bake it in, and have a listen to how it sounds. So how am I gonna do that? Well, I could just start adding 
chords. I could drag the chords out into Logic or into your door. Um, but I'm going to use pad mode and key switches because it's really good to just to be able to write a song entirely in Scalar. Um, so in Scalar we have patterns and patterns are just like a drum machine, a collection of, in this instance, chords. And at the moment we've got one pattern because that's what we dragged from um, the main page into the progression builder. So I'm going to basically say, let's get the suggested modulation pathway and let's add the right click, highlight them all, right click and add to a new pattern. And you can see Scalar will pop up immediately with a new pattern. I'm going to do that again here for the new chord progression, which is going to be, let's say, my chorus. And I'm going to add the chords again to a new pattern. Um, so the best way to see all the patterns in one, there's many things we can do with patterns. We can link them. If I, if I was to highlight and select them all, um, it would bind all those chords across. Um, let me do that just to demonstrate. You can see it's all bound across. That's so a really good way to have more than one chord at any one time. I'm going to right click and I'm going to unselect all patterns just to come back to pattern one. But I'm going to go into pad mode. I'll just have a quick look at some questions. Uh, I have in the map in Ableton, the question is not recommend them to Scalar. Where do the Scalar developers pay the most attention to user suggestions? Is it in the YouTube comments, other social media, their forums or somewhere else? from Ben Bamboo. I think that's a good question, Ben Bamboo. Um, there's a bunch of us always looking around. I think, you know, um, there's a, a big scalar team and there's lots of people involved, but um, it's very personal to us. So we really like to take on board all user comments. And um, there's a lot of, um, as with any product, good and not great noise about. So we pay attention to everything. We log everything and lodge everything we sit down we work about what are the comments and then we kind of prioritize them but in answer to the question the scalar forum um, forum.scalarplugin.com is a place where users always uh, exchanging ideas and suggesting things and we're always pretty much reading every post um, there's a bunch of us here that are reading post and then discussing it every week um, plugin boutique obviously also um, take on a lot of feedback and suggestions on board and discuss with us. And the YouTube comments, um, whether it's the Plugin Boutique channel or the School of Synthesis channel, we're always looking at those. So, yeah, it's it's a great place to submit ideas and suggestions. Okay, so back to the track. So we have um, three patterns. And my first one is my chord progression in C major, my Pattern two is my suggested pathway to get to pattern three, which is my new chord progression in D major. Um, as we'd kind of um, implied, as I'd implied to go play these four chords, then play this chord, then play these three chords, I want that written in. So I'm going to go back into pad mode and I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to grab these three chords and I'm going to move them over by one. Okay. And uh, you guessed it, I'm going to grab that C major chord, I'm going to hold the option key, grab the C major chord and bring it down. And wait for that note to start playing, stop playing. And while we're here, um, so it aligns with the markers in Logic, um, I'm going to write, let's call this a verse, let's call this a bridge, shall we, which is where our suggested pathway lives, and let's call this our chorus. Um, so yeah, we basically want to go through the verse, play the four chords, go through the bridge, play the next four chords and go through the chorus and play the final three chords. Now here you can see in pad mode, key switches are activated. You want to make sure that key switches are always activated. I think there's a bunch of settings here, but in preferences, key switches are on by default. So just make sure you do have them turned on. Sometimes people are in there fiddling with... Um, some of the settings that would be the only reason you wouldn't see key switches um, so if I you know I can select them here or I can write them in and that's what I'm going to do so let's go back to our session in logic and you can see that I've got those four chords there um, the key switches uh, if we come back to scale you can see they're marked clearly C1 D1 and E1 so well I want that verse to play first. So I'm going to write a key switch in and that is really as simple as just writing a little note down here. 
um, and that will basically trigger Scalar into playing um, pattern one or verses we've called it. And you can see I'm aligning it with my logic uh, markers up here. So um, you can probably guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy those same notes across to the bridge, copy the same notes across to the chorus. And what I'm going to do is I'll come into the bridge region here and I'm going to move that key switch up and you'll see that it's actually triggered that. We'll, we'll play through so we can see it all happening live, but it's triggered that second one. That's great. Over to the third region and I'm going to put that key switch up to E. So effectively what should happen, um, let's open the scalers, let's have a look. When I hit play to start, there we go. Yeah, it's going to trigger the first round of chords. As we get to the next region, that key switch should activate. Okay, so we're in our suggested pathway. Here we go. Into our pivot chord and into our chorus into D major. And we go back around. Okay, now there's a few things to note. Firstly, that sounded a bit strange to me going from D major on that G major seventh, this chord here, and going back to the start. So I'm actually going to get Scalar to help me work out how to get back around, and that's what this middle eight section is for. Another thing to note whilst we're here, a lot of people can get confused about some of the colouring of the chords. Blue means you're in scale. Now we're always in one scale. Okay, so at the moment we're in the C major scale. So correctly, when I look back at pad mode, it's saying, well, your chorus is n doesn't have any chords in that scale. That's correct, because we know that that chorus is in D major. I could come back here, switch the scale over to D major, and then they would look right. Sometimes you get um, chords that are light gray. Um, we don't have any here, like these ones, and that's saying um, it shares uh, some notes from that scale, and sometimes you get dark gray, which says none of the notes. So basically, chords are colored blue, completely in scale. Um, light gray shares some notes of the scale, but not in scale. Dark gray, nothing to do with the scale. Is that good or bad? Well, it's neither. Um, and in fact, I think by the time we get to the this end of this trim, we will have some dark gray chords, and that's fine because it's nice to be using chords out of scale for something nice. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm actually going to write some further key switches in this section here. But this time I'm going to write the key switches not to change scalar, but to activate some of these different patches in contact. Now, scalar's effectively hogging the key switches. It's hogging, if I come back into pad mode, it's hogging C, D and E. Um, and because it's using them for itself and it's passing on the rest. Well, that's coincidentally, that's fine. C sharp and D sharp are free, as are the rest. Um, but for the contact patch, I actually want to swap between this Ibiza D and Ibiza B, and they sit on C sharp one and D sharp one. So if I come back into my uh, region here, I'm going to say, okay, can we start on a different patch in contact? So yeah, so that's starting on that D-sharp one, but for this bridge section, I want to say actually come back to um, that first patch and vice versa over here. Um, let's switch back to that D-sharp one. That's all a little bit confusing. Let's have a look at that in action. What we're saying is not only are we switching the lanes here in Scalar, but we're switching the patch. So when we start from the start, we're playing this side B for D. Just gonna mute the drums for now. And now in 
this next round. Yeah, that's switched to a different patch, so that's good. Not only are we playing this kind of bridge, but we're also playing a different patch, so the, not, the notes are nice and different. And now we're going to switch back to that patch and this new chord set. Cool. Um, so I've modulated to a different key. At this stage, it's just a chord progression. So it's all fine and dandy modulating to different keys, but we need some kind of harmonic color, if you like, to give us some kind of melody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in a vocal, okay? And randomly I'll, I'll pull, up, um, pull up Arcade, and here I've got something called Shooting Star. So in Arcade, if anybody uses it, um, it's just part of the hooked presets, and it's one of their patches there called Shooting Star. Okay, so I'll just load that again there. Um, and I'm just going to just adjust some of these settings just to give it a little bit more space and deep and dirty. And it's correctly, um, well, actually, I set this before. I think when you load it by default, it might be in a different key. I know I'm in C major. Scale has told me I'm in C major, so I'm locking it to that scale. So now I have all these notes that I can play. Um, I'm going to pull out my keyboard. Um, so you can see that I'll have all these little vocal patches. Yep. Yeah, um, so they should all work. Um, so if I hit play. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to attempt to write some notes in, okay? So I'm going to hit record. Okay, a little bit messy playing there, so I'm going to um, tighten up those notes a little bit. Uh, so. Great, so basically what that's doing is that's triggering those three notes in hooked um, in, the, in the shooting star patch, um, and it's in C major, so I've just picked those random three phrases, let's see how they sound. It was just a little bit long there, so I'll just um, shorten that. Um, shorten it so nice and tight. Okay, great. So that works. I think that sounds nice. Um, I'm going to be modulating in the chorus. You know we're modulating into the D major um, scale. So if I was to copy this across to the chorus section, I think you probably guessed if we listen through... It's going to sound wrong because it's um, a tone out um, and it's actually playing a kind of a minor key of that scale, so it should sound pretty bad. Let's have a listen. Yuck. 
Um, well, because the vocal's still playing in C major. Unfortunately, Arcade gives me the ability to change that pitch around by, you can see there it's on C, so actually I want it to play D. Um, and it itself takes key switches, so it's really, really cool. Um, and, and that's what I really love about Scala is it can really tell me and direct me to not only controlling other instruments, but when I'm not controlling something directly, like in this case arcade, it's telling me where I should be. So I can figure it out quite easily. I was in C, I need to be in D. So the key switch over in this second region here is to come up and uh, I think it's D0, the arcade likes its key switches down here. So I'm going to say, I just zoom in and get that right on the money so it switches straight away in that section. And it's going to last for that whole for that whole um, region, isn't it? So you can see that note there, that D is going to last for that whole region. So let's see how this works. In back in C major. and okay be nice pitch up here we go yeah much better now I've still got this problem that when I come back to start sounds like a loop but it's not really um, concluding nicely back to that C major so I'm going to come back up the scale I'm going to save everything and the first thing I'm going to do is you'll you'll have noticed that there's a little extra mm in that middle note there so uh, I'm gonna fussily pull that because mm -mm -mm it kind of gives me a little studded mm that, that, that is annoying me so um, yeah just to confirm when I'm playing from the D major, just muted the vocal. And if I wanted this to be the loop of my tune, when I come from that G major 7th back to the C major, it's not really working. It feels a bit jarring. Here we go. G major 7. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to say, Scalar, could you please help me here because I need some help getting back. So it might be time for us to pull up a, another modulation preset. So I'm going to come across the modulation. We've used the progression preset. I'm going to go to the next one. You can see there's a five there. We're going to use them all today. Um, I'm going to go to secondary scale. The point of secondary scale is it says, um, I mean, it's, it's kind of, you would think that it would be there for the more advanced users and certainly the more advanced composers of which we're fortunate enough to have many love this page because what it says is I don't care about you holding my hand or taking me wherever you want to take me or giving me suggested pathways. I want to land on a specific chord and I want to know how I get to that chord. Now, uh, theorists would call it a predominant and a subdominant, basically the fifth of the fifth because you can always resolve nicely from the fifth in C major from the G major back to the C major. And what this little box does is it says, go to the chord. So I'm moving it across to the chord and I will tell you the fifth of the fifth uh, or the subdominant and predominant chords to get there. Well, where do I want to get back to? I want to get back to the C major scale. So I can tell it any mode and it'll say, okay, no worries, we can help you get there. But I'm just going to be nice and simple and say, I just want to get back to that C major. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate because you see in Logic, I've already kind of, you know, said that we're going to need a middle eight to get back to the verse. So that's what I'm going to do. So with patterns, you can select them and you can do a few things. You can detect them. So detecting this, if I click detect now, Scalar would say, oh, you're in D major and would change everything back to D major. I can clear it. I can remove it. I can create a command mapping. Command mapping is for another video, but that is, I think a push user mentioned it before. It's a really great way to say, have push or have machine or have um, an Akai. 
and PC, assign it to a pad. So when you're playing live, you can be switching between patterns and doing multiple things. But in this case, I'm going to duplicate that pattern. Um, it's pulled up a bunch of rests. That's fine. I can right click. You can do all kinds of things in the right click menu, but I'm going to remove those rests because I only want four chords. And I'm going to come across to pattern four um, where it's also created the rests and I'm going to right click and I'm going to remove them. And I'm going to call this the middle eight just so it's in line with my logic program. Um, and of course, because we duplicated it, they're exactly the same chords. You can see them down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm scale is saying to me, if you want to get back to your C major, you need to fall this way Here from a D minor into a G7 and that should sound nicer. It certainly does. It sounds nicer than this kind of from that. Yeah, that drop there. So, um, so what I'm going to do is, given that the middle eight, the first two chords were fine, we just didn't think we ended up in the nice place. Well, this has given us a couple of substitutions. I'll pull this D minor into that third box, and I'll pull the G7 into that fourth box, and I'll come across to pad mode, and now I've got the four sections, okay? And so we have our C major, we have our modulating pathway, um, a suggested pathway to get to the D major, and now to get back, we're not using this one. We're using the first two chords, which sounded fine, but now we're going to the predominant and the subdominant or a really nice and easy way to resolve back to that C major. Um, and if I come back and I write that key switch in over here um, for the middle eight, copy the same chords, because remember, the good thing is I'm only ever triggering four chords, so the trigger notes are always the same, aren't they? C, D, E, and F, and the key switches are just switching between them. Really, really easy way to write extended chord progressions swapping between different types of chords. Um, okay, so uh, let's let's do two things. Let's key switch back to the first contact patch, but let's key switch up to that middle eight chord progression. Let's have a listen to how this sounds. I'll bring the vocal in. We might as well bring the drums in. If you've got any questions, um, feel, feel free to fire them through. Joshua will send them good time when I'm playing a tune. But let's have a look. I'm going to just basically pull up um, the scale. Let's play through. Let's have a look here. up a tone. took off the, um, that was anticlimactic. I actually took off the loop. Let's just do it from here, shall we? Sorry, I took off the loop, here we go. So we're gonna go back around. And this should work. Okay, that worked much better, but I think I had an issue and that even though Scalar told me this is the fifth of this, that D minor really stuck out. And probably just by looking at all those chords, I can see that um, it it's, it's very minor and it just doesn't feel in play with the tune. So yes, Scalar, great, you're fantastic, but I don't agree with you. I don't think that chord sounds very good. Um, 
So I'm, I'm going to ask you to give me some more help. And let's just hear that again as we go around again. So here comes a D minor. This doesn't sound right to me here. This chord does. So that all sounds good. I want to get rid of that D minor. I want to replace it. So let's go back to um, the modulation and let's ask Scalar to help us. So um, this is a good time to borrow a chord, which is a very common thing for musicians to do. They hear a chord, they don't like it, they want to substitute it. So they want to borrow a chord from another scale or mode. And that takes us on to the third preset, which is modal interchange. Now, my problem here is with this middle eight and this D minor. So lining it up straight away, I can see here's the D minors. Um, these are the modes, okay? So you've got your major um, and you've got your minor, um, but you've also got your Dorian modes, your Phrygian modes, your Lydian modes, your Mixolydian mode and your Locrian mode. Now we're not gonna go into too much details, but they're effectively different modes. Probably the easiest way, and sorry if I'm talking to theorists watching um, and stating the obvious, but if you were to play uh, all the white notes C to C, you're gonna be playing the major scale. And if you move on to the next note and play all white notes D to D, you're actually playing the Dorian. Um, e to E, you're playing the next mode, which is the Phrygian. F to F, all white notes, sticking to the white notes, you're playing the next mode, which is the Lydian. Then the Mixolydian, the minor, which you probably already know, is A to A, and then the Locrian, which is B to B. So that's what the modes are. But I don't like that D minor. I've used the D major. What other options? I'm going to borrow a chord. So let's borrow... Borrow the C major, that feels a bit lighter, that, doesn't it, than that minor. So I'm just going to literally just pull it in, okay? Um, and if I go back to pad mode there, you can see it's there. Okay, let's have a quick listen to that again. Borrowed chord. Sounds better. It's the G7. Okay, Skater took a little jump there, or contact instrument took. Yeah, so that's working much better. So I've effectively, just to recap, what I've done is I've created a C major uh, chord progression all in the modulation mode. Um, I've then used the progression preset to modulate to a D major. I then used the secondary scale to work out how to fall back to that C major. I then came in a modal interchange to substitute a chord or borrow a chord. Um, and I populated those by creating patterns and doing um, these chord progressions. Let's just start to pat it out. Now that I've got an idea, I want to start patting it out. Now this will be fairly quick because I've already got everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that, save the logic file. Uh, just in case there's any issues. And now I'm going to pull up um, on this channel here. There's nothing here. I'm going to pull up another scalar. I want exactly the same scalar. Now, in Logic, I can easily duplicate it across, but this is where the sync is really good in scalar. The S logo, top left-hand side, I could go to the first scalar and sync all scalars, but I'm, I'm going to end up maybe asking him to do different things. So for now, I'll copy it across, um, and I'm going to pull up a new contact um, and let's just have a look at what I'm going to pull up I'm going to grab a, another we're going to stick with the electric uh, vintage or the electric um, I'm going to call up the electric vintage I should say um, 
electric series from contact um, native instruments i'm going to pull up electric vintage and uh, there's a bunch of presets here uh, let's have a look for something um, electro pop is the one i was using which i think i just passed there it is electro pop i'm going to double click it and um, select it and that's great so it's just going to basically pay, play that patch um, sorry that might have been off your screen there it is i pulled up the electric pop in electric vintage and i'll just um, close that side pane and with all going well what should happen now is i'll just close this um, instrument if i was to given it's the same scalar and I copied it across, and if you can see it, here it is. It's identical because I just copied it, which is great. Um, I should basically get exactly the same chords playing to that new contact patch. And it's just a way of really me thickening it up, th thickening up the track a little bit. Um, I'm going to pull the all the notes down. Uh, I think you probably already worked it out. They should be exactly the same. But now I'm going to ask, I'm going to say, don't swap the key switches in contact, okay? Keep the key switches for Scalar. So now it's just Scalar doing the work. And that effectively, if I pull up the Scalar control and I put up, pull up um, contact, um, you can see we're now going to have a new channel and we're going to be playing this instrument here. So let's have a quick solo of it. Now I've got two contact instruments playing. I've just copied the scalar information across. It's starting to sound a little bit thicker. I'm just going to come to this vocal and I'm going to stretch. I just wanted to stretch that note out. A little bit more, here we go. Around just last longer. Okay, cool. So we're getting there. Right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a quick break for a couple of minutes. Um, I'll just switch you back to my full view. Hope you're still with us. You're with David Carboni, Creative Director of Scalar, and we are looking through some Scalar advanced features and modulation presets to help us pad out a tune and write a chord progression. We're also going to be giving away copies of Scalar and the Scalar 3 course, which is really what we're here to celebrate today, is the release of the Scalar, 3 course, uh, Scalar 2 course sorry, um, which is um, a 380 minute plus music theory tips plus assessments and exercises going through every single feature and function um, of, uh, of Scalar, available at Plugin Boutique. So just go to the Plugin Boutique site. It's also available at School of Synthesis, but you can go to the Plugin Boutique site as we are on the Plugin Boutique YouTube channel and check out courses there. Um, what I'm going to do is we're going to take a break for three minutes. We don't have too much longer to go. I don't want to be holding everyone up. If everyone's still with us, thank you very much. I hope you're enjoying it and getting something out of it. But I'm just effectively going to add a couple of other parts and we've made the tune. And we'll look at some questions and we'll talk about giveaways. But what I'll do now is I'm going to play a clip from the Scalar course. Um, Tristan is one of the great instructors. Here he's talking about the uh, modal interchange preset. Um, which we already looked at, and it kind of gives you an idea of how the course runs. Um, basically, what the course does is it starts off with an intro by myself. Tristan breaks up modules. There's several, several modules. Really easy to see all the information online. Um, and every module split up by lessons and ends with a creative summary. This is based on the creative summary of the modulation section within the course. 
Um, so let's run that scaler clip. I'm going to take a quick break and I'll be back just after it. I think it's about two minutes long. Um, if you've got any questions, fire them in. Thanks. Uh, we'll be back in a sec. The next modulation preset we have to work with is called Modal Interchange. This page makes it really easy to branch outside of the current scale you're working in and borrow chords from other parallel modes. Parallel modes meaning modes that share the same tonic or based off the same root note. For example, with the C major scale selected, we see the diatonic chords of the C major scale across the top row. And the rows beneath are the diatonic chords from each of C major's parallel modes, with their names on the right. Just beware that the first mode, or the Ionian mode, is listed here as major, and the Aeolian mode is listed as minor. They're the same things, just with different names. So we can build a progression as we usually would, working with one specific scale, in this case C major. So let's start with the 6 and the 4 chords, as we did before. But maybe instead of going to the 1 chord, let's add the minor 2 chord instead. And going to the 5 chord here might sound a bit boring. So let's try the 7 chord instead. Here's what our progression sounds like now. It sounds okay, but that 7 chord isn't amazing. It might pop a bit more if we use the 7 chord from a parallel mode. The Dorian mode, for example, uses an A sharp major chord as opposed to B diminished. So let's try ending with that chord instead. So now we have a progression which starts off in C major, or C Ionian, then briefly moves to C Dorian at the end. However, C Dorian isn't the only mode which uses an A sharp major, several others do as well. In fact, C Mixolydian has all the chords from our progression. So we're now in fact working in C Mixolydian mode. To really spice things up, we can try taking a chord which isn't in C major or C Mixolydian to create a really unique sound. So how about D diminished? Well, it doesn't sound quite right. However, we can choose from a variety of different chord shapes using the menu on the left. Choosing 7th, for example, changes the D diminished chord to a D minus 7 flat 5 chord, which sounds very interesting. And we can try spicy up some existing chords as well, making some major 7th and some minor 7th and maybe a major 9 chord. Now we have a pretty interesting sounding progression. We started out just using the major scale, but what we ended up with is a Mixolydian progression which borrows from the minor scale or the Aeolian mode. Okay, hope you enjoyed the excerpt there from the Scalar 2 course available at Plugin Boutique. Uh, probably a good idea to mention pricing. It's 15 US dollars uh, or 15 dollars in your currency, I believe, um, until the end of April. That's our intro offer. We've had about a thousand people do the course so far. Feedback's been great. Uh, it's a fun course and lots of people really enjoying learning all the features. Everything is for beginners, it's for advanced users, it covers every feature and function. It's available online. It's constantly updated. Uh, there's translations, um, English subtitles, a popular request from our users, and translations in um, simplified Chinese or Mandarin, French, German, Italian, Japanese, um, Dutch, Portuguese, and Spanish, I think a couple of other languages. Uh, they're all being translated as we speak now, so it'll all be updated over the next few days. Uh, available online. Um, thank you. You're with David Carboni, uh, Creative Director here at Scalar, and this is a takeover of the Plugin Boutique channel. We've been writing a track not long to go now. I won't bore you too much more. I think it's probably another 10, 15, 20 minutes we can get through the lot. Um, fire your questions. Joshua Casper's monitoring the chat. Um, someone asked what happens if the key switches, Scalar's key switches, 
um, and the instruments share the same um, key switches or the same notes. There's ways around that. Um, in contact, you can get it to adjust and respond only to velocity, so you can change the velocities. You could have scalar on multiple tracks to avoid the key switches, turn the key switches off. There are many ways around it. Um, let's get back to the track. Let's finish it off, fire through any questions. Um, let me switch back to um, desktop and uh, uh, there we go. And I'll just switch back to chat. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is to flush out the tune, um, I'm gonna pull up a string pad. Um, I'm gonna actually copy um, a scalar across to a, a string um, and pull up a string patch. I'm gonna pull up um, contact. And in this instance here, I'm going to pull up the uh, Sequis, I think it is, and a nice new instrument um, from Contact, and it's a nice pad. You can hear it there. Um, yeah, um, and now I really don't have to do anything. I can just literally pull those notes um, across um, just to make it interesting for when we have that key switch and that guitar patch kind of goes to the, the more mellow patch. Um, it will play that pad, so... Um, so now we're hearing this. And you can see... Those notes are triggering nicely. So it gives us that nice pad for the bridge. Pad drops out. Head comes back in. We go back to the start. Yeah, cool. All right, I might just add one other element here. Um, I will come back to my mixer page. I'm going to copy that scalar straight across. So it's always the same scalar that's occurring because I'm just copying it across the same verse, bridge, chorus, middle eight. Um, I'm going to go for another Native Instruments guitar patch since we're sticking with the guitar theme. Um, I'll have a look at the side pane and I'll pull up, in this instance, I will pull up uh, we've used the vintage, we've used the sunburst, we'll pull up the mint, shall we, electric mint. Um, and let's go uh, mellow EDM. Anything with EDM usually can sound good. I'm not sure if that's a sarcastic comment or not. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say just to kind of rifle up the chorus in the middle eight a little bit, let's add... Um, to this new section, let's add just these notes. And I don't have to tell Scalar to do anything because those notes will come in. Um, you can see that it's going to trigger with that key switch, it's going to trigger that um, the chorus pattern in Scalar and it's going to trigger the uh, middle eight pattern. So now we should have, here we go, the new Scalar. Okay, so this is not doing anything yet because it will start doing it when we get to this section. And here comes that jumps in. Yep. So that's what we're hearing. Now 
Now we've got all four scalers triggering three guitar patches in the pads. And we're back to the tune and start. Uh, we've got the drums. Um, okay. Um, what I want to do is I want to add a final section and that is an outro just to go out and I might get Scalar to again help me with that outro here in this section and I might say okay um, let's find some nice chords just for that outro. So if I come back to the original Scalar I'll just use the original Scalar as my outro to make it nice and simple. Um, here it is here it's this Scalar here Scalar 2. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the modulation section and I'm going to uh, pull up the medians. Now the medians preset, um, just before I do, I'll just grab a question from Dave Twitch Secor. How could you modulate the chords around an existing melody as I would like to do for remixing? Um, well, that's a good question and that's really, that's kind of... Um, Scalar's uh, raison d'etre, excuse my French, it's reason of being, um, which really for me, growing up as an artist and not understanding music theory, I always wondered why there wasn't something like um, a program that could listen to a melody that you're doing and tell you what key and scale you're in and suggest chords. And that's obviously what Scalar does. That's, that's its primary reason for being. It's become much more than that. So in response to Dave, your question about how you can modulate the chords around an existing melody, what really it's about inputting the melody, whether you're dragging in a MIDI file, detecting audio, playing the melody yourself, and Scalar will come up and say, um, this is the key and scale that you could be in. There's plenty of YouTube videos. There's obviously, this is all covered in the Scalar course. And then it'll come up and say, here's the scale you could be in, here are the chords. And it's really just a question of figuring out what chords sound good once you're in the scale, they should all sound fairly good, but what order you like to play the chords in. You can use suggest mode and find your chord progression. And then it's really about modulating around that melody. Well, I think the, the question is, you know, what is the melody doing first and foremost? But just like I was almost modulating around that arcade melody, I pitched the melody, I moved, I modulated by a tone and you would just pitch a melody up by tone. That's probably the simplest answer that I could give. Okay, for the outro, um, I want to move, say, from the C major. Um, and I just want to do something different for the outro. So I'm going to use the medians preset. The medians preset is a lovely preset. You've probably seen me using it. Um, it's, it's very, it's extremely common in film composition. I think probably the person that would get the most credit for it is one of the most famous and greatest composers of all time, John Williams, who really played around with that chromatic medians. And it's basically saying you can move anywhere by a third. Um, here you can move down or up by a major third and um, understanding the theory is one thing, but having it in an ability where it, it sounds good and is nice and easy. And that's what we've done with these modulation presets of which there are more to come where composer we've sat down with composers and said well how would you do it um and then we, what we do is we kind of feed that information into scalar and we find a nice easy method in terms of the ux or the ui as to how that happens median sound really good if you just pull up a scalar and you pull up a string or the brass preset and you just start clicking around they just all really work nicely together but here i want to go from the c major um, and, uh, why am I not playing here? Sorry. That's, yeah, I want to go from that C major. Um, and it basically will say, well, here's all the other chords you could use. So, you know, you can, um, just click around and what it'll do is it'll play you the last chords that you created. Well, I kind of like the C major. Um, I like going to the A major. Um, you can see the dark grey boxes. They're saying, oh, don't go there. But they still sound nice. You know, so that's the nice thing. They all work together nicely. But I'm going to go, that's C major, A major. Let's go the... 
F minor. We kind of haven't gone there. It's a bit darker, but it's cool. It's an outro. Um, there's the chord progression I just played. I'm going to... Um, there's another way I can do patterns. I can just create a pattern and I can say, okay, let's move these straight into a pattern. Not many people know this. You can actually just drag and hover over the pattern and then bang, you can drop it in. So there it is, a new pattern with, um, let's call it right now, let's call it outro so we know where we are at. Um, C major, A major, F minor. And now where do I go for my final chord? Just to demonstrate it, I'm going to go to the last um, modulation preset. It's called the Neo Riemannian. Again, another theory and it's about um i think did tristan no we didn't show you that one but tristan does does really great music theory example in the scalar two course talking about how it's really about moving as fewer notes as possible i want to go from that f minor chord so i just populate that box and it says you can create harmonic transformations um, so we can go to the parallel minor, a leading tone exchange, a relative major, major dominant common third. Don't worry about so much about the names. What sounds good? So these are all close by. Yeah, E major. We, we kind of haven't gone there. That sounds good. That sounds like a nice place to finish the tune off. That's what I'll do. I'll come into pad mode. There it is there. I've, I've created this using the mediance preset and the E major and the um, neo Romanian to find the E major. And now what I'm going to do is, you guessed it, I'm going to copy this across and I'm going to just move that key switch. I'll delete the, um, the contact key switch because it can stay where it was playing before, but I'm going to trigger, ask it to trigger Scalar's final um, lane in pad view, which is the outro. And you can see it's triggered it there. So that should now give me an outro. Um, let's play it through just to um, emphasize the outro. In Logic, what I've done is I've done a little tempo slide. So just to slow down, you can see slow down for the end of that tune. So let's play the whole tune from Go to, go to Woe. Open up the first scalar so we can see it all in action. Into our bridge. Now playing that pad. The third guitar will come in to the chorus. We're using that suggested pathway into a D major key change. that middle A. The borrowed chord into the um, subdominant of the C major. Here we go, the outro. Slows down. We're using median modulation. We're slowing down and the Romanian said we can land here. And that's the end of our tune. So um, a recap, really, just a, just a recap before we... Um, um, Joshua, if you want to fire away the winners of, um, of the Scalar 2 course and the uh, Scalar 2 plugin itself, we can announce that. Um, so just a recap. I just want to basically look at a recap. So um, effectively, we came in to um, Rock 4, we found a song, we liked the first four chords, we dragged them in and we used this verse. Uh, we then came into the modulation section and we came into the progression and we said, can we please modulate to D major? Um, and it said, okay, well, these are your first your chord progression in C major, this is what it would sound like if you want to modulate to D major, that's how your new chords would sound in your new chords. This is how you would get there. And we copied them each to their own um, lane 
or their own pattern. And here they were, verse, bridge, and chorus. That was the suggested pathway. We just added a C major to the start. It made sense because if you look back at modulation, it kind of gave us three chords. So I went, let's play four. Let's play one again. Let's go those three. Let's play four just to keep everything nice and easy, even. We then wrote the key switches so it would switch every time. We were then in D major. Um, we then uh, created a middle eight, and we did that by using the... Um, Secondary scale, because I wanted to get back to the C major. I said, how do I get back to the C major? And it said, well, fall in these chords. That G7 sounded nice, but the D minor sounded a bit out of context for me. So we went into the modal interchange and said, that D minor sounds a bit weird. What other options can I borrow from? Could have borrowed anywhere, but I kept in this lane way here, and I chose the C major, which effectively said I was borrowing from the Phrygian or the Locrian mode. Um, and that... Um, kind of gave us our, our tune. That meant I get, went back nicely to the C major, so I could have kept going around, created that verse. But I came to the outro, I used the Mediance preset, and I said, oh, would you give me a hand here? I want to come up with a different chord progression for the outro. I used the Mediance and kind of noodled around, found this three chords, thought, okay, where can I go from the F minor? Um, I'll take advantage of the final preset. I populated this box with the F minor and said, well, according to neo Romanian theory, these are the chords you could go to. And that created that, that kind of nice outro. Um, I slowed it down. Let's see, let's get that key switch. Let's see, sorry. Here we go, chorus. Oops, that sounds weird because I've actually been start from the start. Sorry, excuse me. And the other thing to note, if you are using key switches and you are in different mode, remember the key switches apply to the modes. So you need to leave Scalar in your pad mode. That's probably an important thing to say. Um, otherwise, it can sound weird because it wasn't actually triggering the right page. Here it is. Yeah, that was our kind of middle eight. Out we go. We got our final outro. Could have gone back to the start. And we just slowed it down as I imagine a guitarist might play for a kind of outro piece. And then we could do a nice fade. Slowing down on that E major. Cool. Okay. Um, that's it. Um, so th thank you so much for watching. I'm going to just quickly announce thank you to Joshua Casper also for monitoring the chat. Um, uh, can Scalar do, keep calm with music send, can Scalar do guitar voicing as a guitarist would actually play the chords and inversions? Um, yes, it can. Um, probably a long winded response is not warranted um, given it's very late at night for me and everyone's been watching for a long time but Scalar obviously has a guitar mode um, and you can do many things there you can look at chord charts um, but it also has guitar different guitar voicings but also um, there are many ways that you can group the notes um, in specific guitar voicing um, or you can use that, the different drop two voicings. So yeah, we are looking at really extending that whole guitar section in Scalar amongst the many improvements that we're going to make in the future. Um, the winners, um, sorry, I was actually thought I was showing you the Scalar page that me, I wasn't, you were looking at me wondering what I was talking about. That's what I was talking about. I was talking about coming into the fretboard view, changing the tuning, turning the guitar chord charts on to see where they can be played. Um, and uh, using the guitar voicings or the drop drop two, drop three, drop four voicings, really, um, that would have worked, by the way, the guitar voicings with the native instruments profiles. Um, one thing I will say, again, the Scalar 2 course, Tristan, um, who's one of the instructors, is a absolutely fabulous guitarist, and he does a whole 10-minute section on using Scalar with guitar, so it's really, really well worth checking out if you're a guitarist. Um, coming back to me and coming back to the winners, uh, congratulations um, to uh, DJ Emo and Robert Bialos for winning um, Scalar itself. And the Scalar course winners are DJ Finesse, uh, Jay Zaza, 
and Bill Andre. They're the winners. Now, I'm going to look back to Joshua's um, text to me earlier, which says, winners need to send an email to support at pluginboutique.com with a screenshot of you logged into your YouTube account. So winners need to send an email to support at pluginboutique.com with a screenshot of you logged in to your YouTube account. And we want DJ Emo Robert Bialis um, for the prize winners of the Scalar plugin. And for the course, Scalar 2 course winners, DJ Finesse, Jay Zaza, and Bill Andre. Um, I'm David Carboni. We look forward to presenting you with the Scalar 2.8 update. I um, hope you check out the Scalar 2 course um, available at Plugin Boutique and School of Synthesis. Um, and don't forget to check out the wonderful community. Thanks to all the members over at forum.scalarplugin.com. There are thousands of users there. Thanks to everyone that's been watching um, today, tonight, wherever you are. Appreciate your time very much. Hope you got something out of it. Thank you very much, most importantly, to Plugin Boutique for looking after us here at Scalar and for supporting us and allowing us to take over their channel. Enjoy the day and the evening and the weekend. I'm David Carboni. Thank you very, very much.